I so, agree. Tully appears to be gone. Gresham appears to be retired, and he he had a screaming match with Tull, with uh, Tony Khan before the match. Walked out after the match and appears to be gone from AEW. So Jeff, mm -hmm. you had some thoughts. I had a post thoughts. that you tagged me in, <laughs> which I'm not even on Facebook anymore, and somehow I heard about it. So <laughs> um, no, I just yelled, "I'm gonna have thoughts, Paul." Yeah, um, and I, I and heard I it from Twitter. Okay, the the Gresham part. Yeah. Um, Jonathan Gresham is the world champion or was the world champion of Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Gresham, who knows what the future plans were for him in Ring of Honor or AEW, but he is the product. And you just turned him heel the week before. You have to give him time to reestablish himself as a heel champion before you drop the belt. And you build up Claudio as a contender during that time. You don't just turn him heel and and then beat him in 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 a few minutes that's just especially if if there's no plan afterwards and i can see where gresham's mad and gresham's upset and i think he has every right to be that said you go in you argue your case and you cuss and you and you and you do whatever and you complain and blah 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 but once you get the hard no and they're not going then you do your job and this was a Sasha Banks losing, didn't want to lose type of job where you can see it all over his face on his way to the ring. You but know? at least he did it. At least he did it. But that that's that's a low bar, Paul. This is your okay. job. You're supposed to do that. Well, so put him ahead unquote, of Sasha. Remember, it's fake, Paul. Yeah. But at the same time, Jonathan Gresham is the product, so he has to protect his value. And I understood mm -hmm. that. And I and mm -hmm. I sympathize with that. And I was fine. Everybody's like, oh, you shouldn't complain. You're lucky to be there because of his side. But no, 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 no. You are your own product, and you have to take care of that because he's not going somewhere else and being somebody else mm -hmm. unless he goes to WWE. But <laughs> he's, he's going to be Jonathan Gresham. Well, a so lot he has more protect... likely than it would have been a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he, he has to protect the Jonathan Gresham brand. Now, the Tully Blanchard part to me, and I chatted with a well-known wrestling journalist about this, and he agreed somewhat with me. It smells a little. Tully Blanchard, look, he has earned his reputation as being a bit of a malcontent. Let's put it that way. His daughter has has an even worse reputation, but Tully had the reputation. But I, I was trying, and look, I'm going to be the guy to try and make the, the case for Tully Blanchard Maybe I'm not saying being in the right here, but maybe it wasn't. He was being a jerk about it because in the history of Tully Blanchard, when he has had these battles, these are things that people these days would usually laud a wrestler for, for doing when he went to, to Jim Crockett in, in, in Crockett, when he was complaining about the booking, when Dusty was putting himself in every feud and said, well, maybe maybe Dusty should book himself against Dusty. We complain about people <laughs> getting shoved down our throats all the time. When he complained about money because Paul Ellering was making more at a show than he and Arn Anderson were for wrestling for 30 minutes, we asked people to stand up for themselves to management all the time. When he decided to leave WWF to come back to Turner and the company leaked an old drug test that he failed <laughs> to cut himself in half, we would be bitching and moaning about how management screws the workers and the guys. I'm not saying that Tully wasn't always looking out for Tully, but Tully was also one of those guys who... who He'd clash with management and we'd be cheering him on if we didn't like the people that were in management at that time. When he came for 93 Slamboree, the aforementioned pay-per-view that he wasn't there for, they tried to lowball him. They, they, I think the, the, the deal for him to come back was going to be $500 an appearance. And, you know, in, in a world where the, people were making mid six figures yeah. because they were like, well, Tully, you have to be a good boy and behave yourself. Now, come on. After he had helped build up the company that was there and he took it as an insult and he told them to go pound sand. Now, Tully Blanchard is 68 years old. If he is still angry and pulling this kind of stuff because he's angry at people, then then it's going to be he, people. Tigers can't change their stripes type of things. But let's let's look at his 
reasoning or whatever. And I'm sure we're going to hear about this at Starcast this weekend, or we're going to hear something. One of two things is going to happen. Oh, either Tully's yeah. either Tully's going to spill the tea about what happened, or he's going to basically say there was a miss. He's going to tow the company line and say there was a miscommunication. I appreciate that Tony gave me this opportunity. Blah blah blah. Which Option is C. Option C is he no shows it. No, I don't. No, no, no. This is Flair's okay. last match. He's okay. he's going to be there for the right. Horseman reunion and everything, and in you know, and and all the personal appearance money and stuff like that. So he's not going to no show this. There's okay. no way he does this. But I I, I assume he's going to tow the pu- company line and, and say, you know what? Thank you for the opportunity, et cetera, et cetera. Look, Tully's 68. Yeah, he's still getting a paycheck in wrestling. Most people are retired, retired by now in any line of work. This is gravy. But let let let's go with the excuse that okay. He had an issue with his prison ministry and there was an issue with travel. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's assume that might be true for a second. Because there have been stories, and don't get me wrong, they're all stories from people who are not happy with AEW that there's an issue with communication from the top to the bottom. Yeah. Of people. And maybe Tully had a had a booking for the morning and said, Hey, I can be there at night, and they sent the ticket to the wrong place or whatever. Let's assume that that let's assume that Tully's not in the fault here. There's that's a possibility. Other possibility is possibly Gre- he knew Gresham once this pairing happened that Gresham was unhappy, and that Gresham was going to make his move when he got to, to TV that night and whatnot. And Tully, in a sign of possibly solidarity and a sign of possibly not making things more difficult than they are, maybe he didn't show up for that reason. Maybe he didn't show up because he knew because you know. I don't know. You've worked in an office. You know when the guy who's mm-hmm. going to just blow up at, at at management or is going to quit that day is going to quit probably. And he <laughs> might give you the Iggy and say, hey, you know what? <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm going to give him my mind. And then you just decide, you know what? Today's a good day for me to call in sick. Yeah. It's not going to be or fun. definitely don't want to be around that guy. Yeah, I was saying yeah. that might be a possibility as well. Yeah. But, but in terms of the creative move here, yes. Prince Nana is Paul Jones. I mean, this is a mid card guy, and I love Prince Nana. I think he's funny. Yeah. He makes me laugh. But 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 doing this with Gresham and the other guys was going to be a main event heel stable. Yeah. And now they're just kind of goofy. And all the people saying, "Well, it's better for the history of ROH." Blah 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 blah. No, it's nostalgia for the history yeah. of ROH. I don't know if it's better for the history of ROH. Be like it'd be like bringing back Slick. And having him manage, you know, like uh, what, you know, like theory and saying, oh, yeah, this is a WWE, you know, he's going to be a main eventer. No, you put him with Slick, he's going to be a mid Carter. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like comparing Bobby Heenan to Slick. Yeah. Yeah. So here, so. But let me give I, you, a, let me give you a third option here that we have, that I've heard nobody bring up. Okay. And look, this is, this is me throwing a Hail Mary here of a possibility because I don't think it's true, but it could be true. What if okay, Gresham Tony Khan knows Gresham's not happy and that Tony and that Gresham is not long for ROH after this show. So he pulls Tully. Does the no show story and that Tully's part of this whole MJF slash Sean Spears yeah. haven't been on TV type thing and they're gonna bring them all back at once. That is uh, or preposterous. It's preposterous, well, but I'm going with it. Well, you know, no, no, but here here. So here's a way where it's not as preposterous. So, okay. Tully, Tully finds out that Gresham's going to lose. He's going to, it's going to be the opener. He's going to lose in 13 minutes. Tully's not happy about this. He, he maybe even expresses something to Tony and says, you know what? This isn't a good idea. Here's why Gresham is clearly not happy. Does a right. shouting match and everything. And Gresham, basically Tully has been around long enough. He knows how this is going to go. Yeah. So, so Tully just, you know, says, you know what, I, I'm going to back out, you know, and let's do this. So then Tony th- figures, you know what, I want to keep Tully. I like Tully. I want to use him. Here's another plan for you, Tully. What do you think of this? And then he brings up what you say. We've got MJF. We've got Spears who have not been on TV. At some point, we're going to bring him back. You're going to be with them because you've never actually broken up. FTR fired Tully. But MJF and Sean the Spears never didn't. fired him. Yeah, you know, and the pinnacle is still a thing. You and know? and look, the stable is far less sexy. Yeah, without Jonathan Gresham. No offense to Brian yeah. Cage, but they no, only two they're guys who are new. But Brian Cage, I mean, they Brian, could win. Cage, they, they Brian could win. Cage needed Tully more than Tully needed. They Brian could win Cage. the six man titles. You know that's perfect for for them. So my thing with Gresham is 
and, and again, I think this has been brought up otherwise. I've been, I haven't really seen a lot of discussion about it, but deliberately staying away from it because I wanted to give my thoughts. Okay. Gresham, I'm a little bit on Gresham's side here. I've heard a lot of people turning on Gresham, you know, like basically, you know what, you're five foot three, you're not believable. Right. You and your wife are constantly causing problems. I've heard, I've heard that. that one. I don't yeah. like that. Um, I think that Tony's got a HR issue. And, yes. and he needs to hire someone to deal with it and he needs to stay out of it from, and, from what I've read the communication, you have to go through a coach first, which is usually yeah. QT or, um, uh, Billy Gunn or somebody else, or even mega Perec who works in right. legal. Yeah. That's you have to I've go heard. through her and you're like, why is mega being, being brought into this whole thing? She has another job. She has and to be she doesn't, person. she's not from the wrestling business. Exactly. So, She's she's a, she can do HR, but she can't do wrestling HR, right? Because she doesn't understand the nuances of booking and how people are presented and all that. But my thing is, the people that have made the loudest noises all seem to have something in common. Um, the color of their skin. <laughs> um, you Ooh, know, the people that we're have going and, there. Okay. Well, I'm. I, you know what? I'm not saying Tony's racist. I'm and not. I, I don't I'm think not he saying is. you're wrong. I'm not no, saying I, you're I wrong. No, I don't think either. he is, but I think there's a perception out there, and I also think that the the perception is coming from the performers as well because they see what's happening in other people that look like them, and they're making assumptions that probably aren't true, but then they're they're incorporating that into how they feel about things. Okay, so I was I was including like Janella. And Marcus well, yeah, stunt yeah. in this as well because they always complain. You about, know what? We didn't hear from them, and it's like I think. To, I, yeah, I don't you think know what? Tony right. has a, I don't right. think Tony has a race problem. I think Tony no. has a has a. I care about. He has a Vince problem. He care Vince only cared about the top of the card, and the rest of the card can go. You know, hey, we'll just throw something for them to for them to well, do. Well, it's also so, the shiny new toy thing. Yes, you he know, has like that he, too. Yeah, where you you bring in new people, and then all of a sudden you forget about the people that have been there forever. Yeah. The one thing I've heard brought brought up this freaking Troy Donovan thing from last week. You've got eight million people working dark and elevation every week. Why didn't you bring in one of the, those guys to lose to Ricky Starks? Right. You, you know, why did you need to sign a guy from NXT that got fired for a wellness because violation? Because he wanted to stick it to Vince. You know what? Don't worry about that right now. I know. That's Vince, what I see Vince too. has other problems. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody, um, everybody's like, yeah. how does this affect AEW? Vince going, it yeah. doesn't affect them at all other than so the fact that make they're not going to get, so, I'm, not gonna get I'm, Sasha Banks and the, and the Briscoes may go to WWE now. But other than that, I don't think Tony's a racist. I'm, I'm, I don't even mean to insinuate it. Oh, yeah. But no. I'm saying that there are people that I think feel that way. Yes. Because of things that have happened in the past. Yes. And uh, I think he needs to distance himself from it. And uh, I think this Gresham one actually has been handled okay, but it just, it's just kind of piling up a little bit, you know? Um, I, I'm, I'll put this out there too. And I'll, uh, and I'll run away when, as soon as I drop this bomb. Sure. Maybe Tony's not as good a booker as a lot of people want him to be. Yeah, uh, that brought to you by Jeff Hawkins at uh, the 24 minute mark, which is well, a good no, it's, it's, it's it, well, it, I mean, not that, but I mean, just in terms of handling the roster, you know, cultivating them, knowing when to push and de push, et cetera, et cetera. This is, this is a job that people learn over time. And Tony's three years in the business. And when I say people learn over time, I mean 10, 15 years in the business. So, well, uh, uh, 10,000 observer voters can't be wrong. So, um, can. <laughs> trust right. me, I, 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 mod I moderate that board. They can be very wrong on.